Hey guys, this is Space Hamster here, and I'm so excited right now. This is the first ever countdown I've ever done, and hopefully you guys like it. Let's get started. Top 20 SNES songs of all time. Number 20. Street Fighter 2, Guile Beam. Starting at 20, we got Street Fighter 2, which at this point probably doesn't need an introduction. It was definitely one of the most popular, if not the most popular, fighting game for the Super Nintendo, alongside maybe Killer Instinct and Mortal Kombat. But those games don't really have the extremely fine-tuned and balanced gameplay that Street Fighter 2 had. Not only was the gameplay fun, exciting, and challenging, but the music was unique and stood out too. It was set up differently for each stage, trying to sound as much like a tune could from that specific country. Now Guile is from America, so I guess that this theme is American? But whatever, it really is a good track from the game, and the fact that this theme does really go with anything makes it an easy choice for this list. Number 19. Seriously, I don't know why this game gets so much hate. Maybe it's just because of Kitty Kong, but seriously looking back on it now, I'd go as far as to say it's better than the new Donkey Kong Country for the Wii. Right? Wrong. And I'd say that solely because it lacks the use of inescapable motion controls. Anyways, if this song is telling you anything, it's that yeah, Donkey Kong is back. That's exactly what I wanted to hear when I was a kid. It's crazy to think that there hasn't been a proper new Donkey Kong until recently, because I don't know about you, but I'd have gotten every single one just from the music alone. Number 18. Act Racer, Fillmore. Act Racer is probably one of the more interesting titles to ever come out for the Super Nintendo. In it, you play the role of a god who is sent to oversee the development of man, creating miracles, directing the flow of the population, and defeating villainous monsters is all the norm here. Populous had just come out a year earlier, and Black and White, a game with similar endeavors, wouldn't come out for another 10 years. So you could say that Act Racer was truly one of the first attempts at this type of game. Now I'll admit, when I first played Act Racer, I was probably a little too young. I couldn't really understand the complexities of what was going on here, and not to mention my reading capabilities probably weren't the best. But when I actually made it past the introductions and got into the first level, the music was the first thing that jumped out at me. It wasn't the sword swinging, platforming gameplay, even though that was fun too. It was the music. Time hasn't done particularly well to the game, mainly with the way the menus function, but it's still a blast to turn on and play every once in a while, and that music will stick with you too. Number 17. Mystical Ninja, Oedo Town. To me, this theme simply means Mystical Ninja. Not only is the game extremely fun and challenging, not to mention cooperative, but also a great period piece when it comes to cross cultural projects. I'm sort of amazed at how little this game is brought up and discussed when people are compiling their top SNES lists because it seems so overlooked for the most part. Or maybe that's just me. When this game came out, it was somewhat unique in that it was one of the first games to bring a Japanese feel to an entire product, including the music, which was also heavily influenced by Japanese culture. Everything you would expect to hear from a Japanese-themed video game track is here. I think that's why I like it so much. It's everything you want in a light-hearted Japanese-themed video game. Oh, also, check out that guy's hair mustache. Sixteen. 
Ah, uh, Ogre Battle. Many, many hours have been spent with you. Directing my army, upgrading my units, trying to solo the game with just my main character, and being cheap as hell when using those tarot cards and ghosts. Ogre Battle is probably one of the more unique games you'll ever play on the Super Nintendo. The idea of controlling an army might not have been a new idea, but if it was used, it definitely wasn't as well executed as Ogre Battle. The music stands out as well as being heroic in tone. The first time I heard the Overworld theme, I felt like I'd just heard something important. The theme of my oncoming victory. Fanfares aside though, this game does a great job with music all around. Not just with the Overworld. But since you spend a lot of time in the Overworld, sending your troops places and making hard decisions, it's good that this song doesn't get old. Turtles in Time, Big Apple, 3 a.m. Turtles in Time takes the 15th slot as one of the more upbeat and jazzy boys, having its distinct Turtles vibe. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was extremely popular when I was a kid. I think I can even recall having pajamas that made me look like a Ninja Turtle badass, and with imagination at my side, it was real. Back to the game, however. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time is celebrated as one of the best beat-em-ups of all time. Hell, some people would probably go as far as to say it is the best. However, I think that these types of games, although fun for a little while, are a bit outdated as a genre. People tend to want huge combos and lots of different moves to pull off now. But when this game came out, it was the pinnacle of beat-em-ups, and not just in gameplay, but in stylish music too. I remember when I was a kid that I rented this game from Blockbuster multiple times in a row, to the point where it would have been more economical to just buy the game. I say this only because it's an example of how fun and complete the game truly is, and the music is a direct byproduct of that. It sets the mood for each stage perfectly, getting you excited for what's to come. Number 14. Mega Man X3 Zero's Theme. Now, ironic song choice aside, the Blue Bomber has always been known for his catchy tunes. Even in the newer X series, most of the stages progress from chip tunes to more of a rock and roll feel, which is exactly what this track does. Rock, but with some urgency and mystery. To this day, I still don't actually know if Zero's a guy or girl, but damn does he she have some rockin' tunes. Number 13. Super Mario Kart, Rainbow Road Theme. Mario Kart is hailed as one of the best racing games for the Super Nintendo, right next to F-Zero. I think what makes this game so appealing is the fact that racing was never really this aggressive and strategic before. The application of red shells to the face of one of your closest friends also helps. Remembering back, I can recall that this game was extremely challenging in the later parts, and you could easily get knocked off the track and lose multiple positions at once. Although it can be frustrating, it definitely rewards skill more than the more recent entries did. In the newer ones, it seemed like there's always a blue shell waiting for you right before the finish line. The SNES version, however, is home to some really good tracks. This theme is just so great all around. It's got a dark bass and boss-like tone that sounds like you finally made it to the end. This track definitely gets you into the mindset that you're in for a good race. Number 12. Zombies Ate My Neighbors, Evening of the Undead. When it comes to co-op games, this is a game that should be on everyone's list. But that's for another time. The reason I chose this track over the others is because I find the build-up and payoff of the song to be a lot better than the others. The way the entire track cuts out and you're left with that creepy banging noise really jumps out at me. Now there's a lot of great tracks in this game. And the same can be said of all the games on this list, but this is the one that stands out the most to me. Number 13. 
number 11. When you stumble upon something new, something so great, your face uncontrollably grins and you're left with that goofy smile for hours. Well, that's exactly what happened to me when I discovered this game. It's actually only recently that I'd gotten back into Super Nintendo games as a whole. I had never really tried out Castlevania before, and oh boy, I can tell you right now, that was a mistake. Better late than never, though, in this case. Because if I hadn't popped this baby in, I wouldn't have heard this tune and my life wouldn't be the same. 